Hey, it's Terry from Everything Homestead. Today I'm going to show you a review on the Producers Pride poultry hutch that we just purchased. In a couple weeks we're going to be trying to raise some ducks and usually I like to try to build all the structures myself and then I know that they're uh, plenty strong and last for quite a while but it's been so busy my wife thought it'd be a good idea and I agreed. Let's just try to buy a coop and find the best one with the best reviews that we can find, buy it and give it a shot. So today I'm gonna show you the finished product. My wife and I spent uh, most of last evening putting it together. And when I say my wife and I, uh, pretty much my wife did just about all of it because with my uh, weight restrictions from my recent surgery, she's been covering everything I do and she's doing a fantastic job. I give a lot of thanks to her for all the stuff she's been doing for me this last few weeks. And not only does she do everything for me, she's doing a really good job as well. You're never going to see my wife or daughters on my videos because I just refuse to put them out there for everyone to make their comments on. And I could easily be like the other immoral channels out there and put my uh, wife in a bikini doing stuff and I could get a million views that way. I'm not going to do that. I hate it when people do that. So that's why I don't put them on my videos. Number one, I don't need the comments about my wife in a bikini. Number two, I don't think I could ever get her on camera with a bikini. So on the box, when you look at it, it comes in a box that weighs about 130, 140 pounds. So it shows on the box, it's got a big panel on the side for easy clean out. That's kind of important to me because I don't like to have to crouch down and get in a really tight spot and try to clean stuff out through a tiny little hole. So that was a big deal. I'll show you what it looks like in a little bit. There are two nesting boxes in this coop and now we're getting ducks and it's a little less predictable of where they're going to lay eggs, but we're hoping they'll use the, the uh, nesting boxes inside. Uh, I'll show you that. It shows there's a couple air vents in there. That's actually kind of an important feature that I like about it. And like I said, we're getting ducks. So you can use it for chickens too. Like it shows in the picture, the ducks require a little bit lower uh, elevation to get into this thing. A chicken will go all the way up a steep ramp to get inside. The ducks, from what I understand, not so much. So you like to have a little bit easier for them to access through the ramp to get in. So it says accommodates up to six chickens. I'll show you. Uh, I think it will. Looking at the square footage of it all, I think it'll be just fine for that. Uh, our particular situation is that we'd like to get the ducks in an area inside an enclosed cage that we're going to build. So it's going to be kind of a semi-mobile coop, I guess you could say. And we're just going to move it around the house. It's a little bit safer around the house from predators. They don't like to come as close to the house, so we think it'll be okay. Um, I know I mentioned in my previous video, but when I built my chicken coop, I was concerned about predators, and I always am. But with the ducks, uh, we just think this would work out okay and we'll keep them as safe as we can through this whole process. But we're gonna try to put this unit inside of a caged coop and we're gonna see if we can incorporate them together so we can still move them, but we'll see how that goes in a future video. So this is the finished product right here. Just a quick glance at it, it actually looks pretty good. When I was finished uh, constructing this with my wife, we looked at it at first, we were wondering if it's going to be kind of flimsy. Turns out when it's all put together, it's not bad. It's a lot of thin walls and stuff like that, but by the time you incorporate everything all together, it ties itself in real nice. It's pretty solid looking uh, coop. So up on the top, the vent that was uh, described on the box that I showed you earlier, is a nice looking vent. It's got open and closed. If you want to close in the winter time, we're open wherever you want it. It's a nice little slide open design. The poultry netting or chicken wire inside here is a heavy duty quality wire, predator proof, which I like. In my previous video, you'll see where I mentioned that the regular chicken wire is useless to keep predators out. But they did use a quality screen here for this. That's good to see. And down here is the main entrance to the coop. It's also a sliding door. It's got some nice hardware. When you bring it together, it's got a little spot where you can attach a little lock or a clasp or something to keep it shut to keep the predators out at night if you so choose. And then down here is the, the ramp and primarily for the ducks. You can 
you just have chickens and it was sitting on the ground, you wouldn't even need a ramp for the chickens. They'll just hop in there. But there's a ramp for the ducks. The one modification that my wife and I did to this is that the factory instructions said to just screw this into the side and be permanently fixed in this position. With us potentially moving this thing around, we could see how this thing would be broken pretty easily. So we went down to my uh, the Terry hardware store down in my shop, found some old hinges laying around, put some hinges on there instead. Then we put a little screen door hook here so it can hinge up. And this little hook catches right there. We can set it in this position when we move it around. Super simple to do, but it's probably one suggestion I would have for anyone that buys this unit to do regardless, because the way this is set up, it's just bound to break off as soon as you wiggle this around a little bit. This will catch in the ground, snap off, and it's gone. While I've got your undivided attention, you see that little red box right there? If you click on that, get you subscribed. I'd really appreciate it. I'd be honored. Please, just click that little thing right there. Thanks. Now we're on the side of the coop where the nesting box location is at. It's a pretty good design. I'm a little bit impressed with it. It came with this plastic uh, rubber, I guess, piece here. So when the rain comes, it would come off of here and fall down in here. There's a little bit of a gap right here in case there's any other moisture coming in that this flap will help deflect off so the moisture won't go into the nesting box. But that was actually a pretty good idea. And so down here is a clasp that you have to open to get access to this thing. The clasp here that you have to undo that locks down the access to the next nesting box is critter proof and it's uh, almost human proof too so with this design you have to lift up this little key here lift it up slide it over to the side just like that and you can see i'm still struggling with it but slide it over to the side so then it pokes straight out once it's straight out, then you can lift up this, and then you can get access. And then to close it back up, you point this little dealy bob straight out, so it comes through the latch, and you rot rotate it in, and slide it back, and it's locked again. Not sure if I like that design very well, it's a little bit tough to deal with, but it does work well, I guess. Nothing's gonna get in there. Open up the nesting box. This is what it looks like on the inside. There's two spots or two nesting spots there. One of the modifications my wife and I did was this piece, this piece and the bottom all just sets in there. And the way it's set up here is that there's nothing holding it there and keeping it from sliding off and into the coop. So my wife and I pre-drilled and we set a couple screws in just to hold it from going anywhere. Super simple thing to do. That's one more recommendation. Uh, it was not in the instructions. There's no way to keep this nesting box from coming out. And if you ever, I mean, there's no reason for it because you can access it from the top to clean it out. You can even access it from the other side to come in and clean it out if you really want. And if worse comes to worse, you can take those screws out and remove it all together. But the problem is, is that without those screws, this nesting box can slide forward and that would create a gap to the outside on the back side, which any critter can then get in here. So that's one little modification. It's actually kind of important, we thought. And then here on the back side, there's not a whole lot to talk about. There's just one more event, just like on the front. Kind of a neat setup though, because it does allow for cross ventilation, which is not always something you see in coops, but it's actually something that works very well on hot days and uh, anytime there's a lot of humidity in there. This cross ventilation with the two vents solves the problem almost instantly. So again, this is a nice feature of this coop. So on this side, this is a big door on this side. This is the clean out side if you ever need to get in there and clean out the thing. 
and it's kind of handy. It's got these little latch pins, top and bottom. It's just a big door, opens up. On the inside, there are two roosting bars there and in the back. You'll see in the very back are the nesting boxes that I showed you a little bit ago. On the floor, I was actually pretty impressed with the floor. It was a plywood floor, and then they gave us a sheet of plastic to go on over the top of that. So that's weather resistant, easy to clean. It's so slippery, you could clean it out so easily and get it really clean really fast. That's a nice feature, and I'm pretty impressed with that. It comes with a nice shingled roof. The shingles and everything are pre-installed with the panels when it arrives, so you do, don't even have to apply the shingles, so that was a nice feature. I hate roofing in any way, so it was nice. It all came together on uh, all the uh, roofing surfaces. You just had to put these screws in, which do have some uh, rubber washers underneath them to help keep any leaks from getting in there. Is this a building that's going to last for 100 years? Nope. But is it a building that's put together well enough to get through the elements to last uh, up to five, 10 years? I think that's pretty easy to do. <clears throat> We're gonna put it underneath the canopy, which will probably extend its life even further since the weather probably won't directly hit it so much. For the money, it's not so bad. If you had to purchase the materials and build this yourself, I don't think you could do it for the price we paid. I think we paid around $250 for this thing. You'd have to do a ton of work to get this to look even close to this and functional. Out of the box, it probably took us probably two hours to put it together. There were just a couple of uh, instructions that weren't very clear, but it's something you can easily work through. Like we made the adjustment to put the hinges on there. We had one strip of wood that was about an eighth of an inch too long that didn't allow the panels to come together. We had to trim that board, so that's not the end of the world. Otherwise, overall, I think this is a pretty nice building, and I'll show you in the future videos how we're going to incorporate it with the uh, mobile cage that we're putting together. So, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Catch you later.